Hey guys, that album review we got here. Reviewing an album that I've been wanting to review for a while. And that's the new Linkin Park album, The Hunting Party. Now, in case you didn't see my uh, track review for their single Guilty of the Same a few months ago, I did say that I am a Linkin Park fan, but I wasn't a big fan of Living Things or A Thousand Sons. But, you know, I was looking forward to this album because I was hoping this would be their turnaround album. Uh, you know, the one that I enjoy more than the last two, because I didn't like their last two albums. I mean, A Thousand Suns at the Catalyst. That's about it. You know, I didn't really like Living Things at all. But... You know, this album, well, I'll get into it. Uh, this is the band's sixth album. Uh, and, you know, they've been around for a while. They produced some good albums, like Hybrid Theory, Meteora. I didn't think Minutes to Midnight was that bad. And they produced some stinkers. A Thousand Suns and Living Things. Will this be their turnaround album? Let's find out. Keys to the Kingdom is the intro track. Uh, it opens up the album with some aggressive vocals, and those are followed by some hardcore instrumentals. And after a bit, the track kind of mellows out a bit, but you know, the aggressiveness is still there in the chorus and whatnot. And then the next track, All for Nothing, features Paige Hamilton of Helmet, um, who sings the chorus with Chester in the background. And, you know, it opens with some instrumentals and a rap verse from Mike. And, you know, in the chorus, I already mentioned, Paige, Chester. What a duo. Even though Chester is just in the background. Paige does the majority of the singing for the chorus. Um, I'm not really going to say much about Guilty All the Same due to the fact that I already reviewed it. Uh, when it was released as a single a few months ago. And if you didn't see that track review, check down there. It'll be there, I promise. I will say, though, that Rakim's uh, rap verse was great. It worked with the uh, instrumentals and whatnot, and the whole song just worked as a whole. Um, next, The Summoning, which is just an interlude that leads Guilty All the Same into War. And War is an upbeat, aggressive track. Eh, but it's only about two minutes long. And it's meh. Very meh. Then you got Wastelands, which is catchy and grooving. And it's pretty easy to get into. At least for me, anyway. I like the instrumental. Kind of reminds me a little bit of a Rage Against the Machine. Just a little bit. But you may disagree. Uh, then we have Until It's Gone. It's a softer track, uh, it's decent, but in my opinion it's lacking something. I mean, I don't know what, but it's just not all there for that song. Could be the fact that it repeats the words until it's gone, or you don't know what you've got. No, you don't know what you've got. Oh, you don't know what you've got until it's gone. But, you know... Repetition. Maybe that's one of the reasons that... I'm not saying I hate this song. It's just I think it could be better. Uh, but after that softer track, the album goes into Rebellion, which features Darren Malankian, Malankian, my apologies, of System of a Down, who is featured on guitar. And, you know, this song starts with a heavy intro and gets into the vocals, and... Due to the fact that Darren Malakian is in it, it does have a slight system of a down feel to it. Then we get into the next track, Mark the Graves, which uh, features quite a few pauses and transitions in the intro. The song as a whole is okay, but it's nothing too special, despite all the uh, changes and whatnot in the intro, which to me is a bit unnecessary, actually. Then the next song, Draw Bar, features Tom Morello of Rage Against the Machine, on guitar and you know it opens with the piano intro 
then that leads into some drums, which leads into some bass, and you know, one thing leads to another, and it gives the track a slow build, but you know, there are no vocals on this track, and as I said, Tom Morello is featured on this track, but he didn't need to be there. His, his presence wasn't even imminent. You couldn't even tell he was there if you didn't read it. If someone just played this to you and said it was a Linkin Park song, they wouldn't know that Tom Morello was there. Usually you could recognize his guitar playing. Not apparent. Not at all. As a matter of fact, if I didn't know Tom Morello was in the song, I wouldn't have believed it. I didn't hear any remnants of Tom Morello's appearance in that song at all. And due to the fact that there are no vocals, you know, the track just feels like an interlude to me, really. And, you know, it didn't really serve as an actual track in the album as far as I'm concerned. It was just an interlude which led uh, Mark the Graves into Final Masquerade, which is probably why it flows fairly well into Final Masquerade. And this is another more mellow track. It's also another mediocre one. It just doesn't do it for me that much. And then we get into the final song on the album, A Line in the Sand. And it features some mellow verses as far as both uh, vocals and instrumentals go. The chorus is a bit heavier, though. And it's the longest track on the album, almost seven minutes long. Uh, there are many different elements to this track that make it a great track and make it a great way to end the album. Now, one thing about the album is most of these tracks have some weird outros that just don't relate to the tracks, at least in my opinion. But, ignoring that, you know, this album... It was a bit of a turnaround for Linkin Park, I'll admit it. I did like it more than Living Things and A Thousand Suns. But I didn't like it as much as the earlier stuff. But it is a turnaround. Uh, favorites, Keys to the Kingdom, Guilty All the Same, Wastelands, Least Favorites, Drybar. Yep. Even though I said it really feels like an interlude to me, Tom Morello just wasted on that track. They didn't need to have him. He wasn't doing anything special. And that track was nothing special. Like I said, just an interlude and such. At least it felt like that. If it was trying to be an actual track, didn't work. Not for me. But overall, I give this album a 7.5 out of 10. Not quite an 8. But it was a nice, refreshing uh, Linkin Park album. Better than their last two. So I gotta give props to Linkin Park for that. What did you guys think of the album? What do you want to see me review? Let me know. And I will possibly get to it. After I catch up. Which I'm working on that. That album reviewer guy. Signing off.